What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through setting up and getting OpenSSH running on your PC as a server. That way you can remotely connect to your PC through SSH, manage files, run commands, etc. It's like a remote desktop, but literally just a command line, so it uses much less bandwidth. And of course, you can use it with something like Visual Studio Code or WinSCP for remote file management, etc. Without further ado, let's begin. How do we set this up? Well, hit start and open up settings on either Windows 10 or 11. Now inside of here, you'll need to head across to the sidebar and into apps, then optional features. You can also search for this on your start bar on both Windows 10 and 11. You'll see something like this. What we'll need to do is search for SSH and see if we have SSH server installed. If you don't see it, click add an optional feature or view features. Whenever the button is for you, search for SSH and it'll be ticking open SSH server. Then when we have this selected, click next, and install. Now we just need to wait for it to download and install. Now, assuming this didn't work for you, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the PowerShell OpenSSH GitHub page here. All we need to do is go to the latest release on the far right here, then scroll down, find the one that matches your PC, in my case, Win64 MSI. Download this, and when it's done, open it up. .msi just means installer, it's similar to .exe, but Win64 is the part we're focusing on. Yours may be Win32 if it's 32-bit. Click yes if prompted for admin and wait for it to complete. When this is done, the OpenSSH server should be installed on your PC. We can check with start and R to bring up the run dialog, type in services.msc and hit OK. This will open up the services manager. Now inside of here, sorting by name at the very top, then clicking anywhere, typing in open, we should jump down to open SSH server, which should now be running. We can double click in it for some more information. Just make sure startup type is set to automatic if you'd like it to start with your PC. You can also tell it to log on with a specific user account if you'd like to limit its permissions. Recovery, it's a good idea to always restart the service as of course, when you're far away from your PC and you want to use this, you'll definitely want it running. Just a quick note, this OpenSSH here is installed in Program Files OpenSSH. However, the one installed by Windows should be in C Windows System32 OpenSSH. Anyways, at this point, when we're sure that SSHD is running and set to automatic, we can add firewall rules to allow it through the Windows firewall. The easiest way to do this is with a PowerShell command. So open up a terminal as administrator as such and open up a new PowerShell window here. Otherwise, just run PowerShell as admin. In the description down below, you'll find this. This is the command to allow SSHD located here. Obviously, you'll need to change this to the path that SSHD is installed in. If it installed manually instead of through the Windows features, in which case you'd use this path here. So I'll go ahead and correct this. There we go. You know what? In fact, I'll have both of these down below. Anyways, on port 22, allow TCP direction inbound, enabled, true, etc. All we need to do now is hit enter and the firewall rule should be created. Obviously, if you use a third party firewall or antivirus with firewall software, you'll need to allow it there as well. I seem to have duplicated OpenSSH there. That's the correct command. That's the correct command, but you'll find the correct one in the description down below. Anyways, I'll need to go fix this manually in the Windows firewall. All right, we should now be able to connect and use it. So for example, I'll fire up Ubuntu WSL, or you can use a different PC on the network. Here I am inside of Ubuntu, for example, Neo Fetch. There we go. To connect to our actual PC, all we need to do is SSH, followed by our local IP address. You can open up a new command prompt window, type in IP config, hit enter, and you'll get all of the ways that you're connected to the internet. The way that we're looking for is, in my case, Ethernet, which is this one here, and this is the IP address of my computer on the network. We can check by pinging it, and if we get a response, then there's something there receiving it. That's my PC. Okay, so SSH followed by our IP address. Right before this, we need our username at followed by the IP address. 
The easiest way to check this is by hitting start in R, opening up command prompt by running CMD, and inside of here, type in echo percentage user name percentage, and you'll see your Windows username here. In my case, it's techno, so TCNO, at, followed by my local IP address, as this is a computer connected on the same network, enter. Now we're prompted for a password, and upon entering it, hitting enter, we're now on our Windows PC. Using DIR, for example, we see all of the files and folders in our user directory. But what about security? I'd obviously recommend using key-based authentication in OpenSSH. This way, you'll have a really long, effectively, password to connect and use your PC and your account. As you can see here, username password works great on local hardware, but across the internet, it's possible to brute force, especially with simple or no passwords. So how do we do this on Windows? Well, it gives some information about key pairs, which you'll find this page linked down below, but we need to start by generating a host key here. We need to have the OpenSSH server installed first, which we have done so already, and the SSHD service is set to start automatically, so we can skip over this as we already have it running. Then use a key generation. This essentially generates a private and public key pair. The private key is used to connect to the public key, and the public key is stored on our server, which is our computer here. Since there's no user associated with the service, the host keys are stored under C program data SSH. We'll open up this folder and you can see the keys here. All right, use a key generation. To use the key-based authentication, we need to first generate a public-private key pair. SSH keygen is used to generate key files and algorithms here can be specified. If no algorithm is specified, RSA is used. A strong algorithm and key length should be used, such as ED25519 in this example here. So I'll copy this command here and paste it into Windows Terminal as such. Now we'll need to enter the file in which we'll save it as, for which I'll leave it as the default, and just hit enter to accept it. We can also specify a path or file name if you'd like them to be generated somewhere else. At this point, we'll be prompted for a passphrase to encrypt our private key files. The passphrase can be empty, but it's not recommended. The passphrase works with a key file to provide two-factor authentication. For this example, we're leaving it empty. So essentially, this key file is a really long password used to connect to your PC. This password you're applying to the key file, so it should be a much simpler one that you can remember. Without this key file, having that shorter password is pretty much useless. It won't give you any access to your PC. It just decrypts the longer key that's used to connect to your PC. I'll leave it as the default, hit enter, and enter a password, hit enter once more, and clear my screen. Okay, there we go. Now that we have our public-private key pair in, a, in the specified location, there are .pub files, which are the public keys, and files without extensions are private keys, such as the ones here. Now, when we ran this the first time, it told us where it would save it, which would be C users, our username, .ssh, followed by ID ed25519. They are down here for me. The private key files are the equivalent to a password and should be protected the same way you protect your password. Use SSH agent to securely store the private keys within a Windows security context associated with our Windows account. Now, this last section here basically loads the private key used to connect to our server or our computer that has the public key on it. This command here will go ahead and store it in the SSH agent so it's securely locked away in Windows. There shouldn't really be a way to get it back, but anyway, we can copy the private key file onto another computer and install it using this command here. Scrolling down, deploying the public key. So without private and public key him, we'll need to take the private key across to a different computer. We can copy our public key using OpenSSH SCP secure file transfer utility or using a PowerShell to write the key file. We basically need to copy the public key file into a text file called administrators authorized keys in C program data SSH. You can do it using this command here from a different computer over the network, or you can do it from your own PC connecting to itself. So in an administrative command prompt, we'll be copying all of this, except for the last line that is, these two lines, pasting it in and running it. Now, with these two variables set, we'll be using this command here to connect to ourself. So I'll copy this and paste it in, though we'll change username to our PC's username and at will just be localhost. Obviously, if you're doing this over the network, it'll be the IP address. We'll need to confirm it, yes. 
and it's been added to the list of known hosts. We'll need to enter our password and now it's been added to the list of authorized hosts. So you can now see administrators authorized keys and this file here contains the SSH public key to connect to this computer. Now we should be able to log in with that public private key. If I open up Visual Studio, for example, and use the remote connect to host, Configuring our SSH hosts in Visual Studio, we can, for example, add it like this. We'll connect to ourselves and use hostname as the local host. Port 22 user will be my username. Identity file is located here. I'll save it. F1, connect to host, connect to myself, Windows, enter the password for the key. And just like that, it'll download and set up the VS Code server for us to use. And now if we just open C Drive, for example, we can trust the authors and navigate it around our PC just like that. We can trust the authors and navigate it around our PC just like that. Using Control J, we now have a PowerShell terminal, for example, where we can run commands and, of course, interact with our PC as if we had a shell there instead of over the internet. Now the steps would be pretty much the same for connecting using a laptop or anything like that. Now, should you want to control this over the internet, you'll need to port forward port 22. But it's a good idea to disable password authentication outright. That way, people can't guess your simpler Windows password and they need to use the key to connect. So we'll open up percentage, program data, percentage, SSH, and inside of here, we're looking for SSH underscore config. Opening this with Notepad or any other text editor. In this file, we have tons of commented outlines that we can just uncomment and edit, or you can add in extra lines at the very end, whichever one you choose. You can change the port. Just remember to change your firewall configuration and port forward the correct port. Scrolling down authentication, you can set max retries, public key authentication. We'll skip over and we'll look for password authentication down here. To disable tunneled clear text passwords, change to no here. So I'll uncomment it and change to no. Permit empty passwords, no. But of course, we don't have password authentication so we can save it as is. Uh, I think we need to open up Notepad as admin for this. Okay, Notepad, run as admin, then file open, navigate to this directory, any document, sshd config, and copy paste our modified config across as such. There we go. So with everything set now, we can save it. All we need to do is restart the SSH server service. So once again, services, open SSH server, right click and restart as well as the authentication agent here as well, I'm pretty sure. Now, when we try to connect to it, you should see things are a little bit different. So SSH, techno at my local IP, enter. You can see permission is denied public key keyboard interactive. That's it. We can't connect at all unless we supply a private key. Okay, so let's try that. I'll use VS Code to connect with a private key. And this time, you should see after entering our SSH key password, we're connected and things are working. So open C drive, for example, confirming the password, you can now see we're back over here. Great. We can use Choco install NTOP portable to set up and install NTOP, for example, using Chonklity, which is the equivalent of HTOP on Linux. Running it, you can see NTOP on PC, details about my computer, CPU, memory, page files, etc. It's effectively task manager, but over a command line. It's pretty cool. Anyways, at this point, all that's left to do is port forward and you should be able to access it over the internet. Awesome. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.